Hello, it's Sarah, and I wanted to talk about art journaling today. Just kind of giving you guys uh, a little bit of info from my perspective of what I've come to learn about what art journaling is um, and what I like to do in my art journal. So I have a bunch of stuff all over my desk, and I'm going to start right here. Um, this is a pile of art journals ish, okay? This is not an actual art journal. It's just one of those composition books, the one the kids get for school. But if that's all you have, this could become an art journal. I've seen a lot of people do this. They end up gluing a few of the pages together because they're just paper. And if you're gonna use mediums and lots of paint and stuff, uh, that's what they do, but I've seen that done. This is just a notebook for me. Um, the next one is an actual, uh, this was a class that I took, a convention. We painted the cover of this, and I'm pretty sure it's just a sketchbook. Like, I don't think it has the brand in it anymore, but it could just be Canson or one of those brands. But the paper feels like, to me, it feels, it's a pretty thick quality sketchbook. I'm, I'm going to say it's a sketchbook, and that's actually what I used it for in the past. Um, when I was doing mosaics and stuff like that, I would kind of just jot my ideas down. I did do a couple of like art journal-y pages when I was playing with my inks and stuff. Um, when I really very first, first started playing with that kind of thing, before I really knew what I was doing. I was just playing in here because I had this book that I painted in a class. And then this one is another brand book. It has the um, spiral binder on it. It's really big. Like this is, I'm um, going to try and see, 12 by 9 it looks like. I mean that's big. So especially if you open it up all the way this way, that's a lot. So I would probably just work on one page at a time. Um, but this is a pretty good quality paper in here. I mean, this this might be a mixed media book. I'll bet you this is a mixed media book. And I actually um, did the cover like with a bunch of stuff. I, I know I put cheesecloth on here and collage some napkins and letters and stuff and thought I was so cool. But I mean, I don't like it that much. It's 2013. Um, I did do a few pages in here, just playing around. Again, mostly uh, sketching out ideas I had, but I did, I guess you would consider that like an art journal page. Oh, I feel texture up here. <gasps> oh, I colored some texture paste or something. Oh, I like that. Oh, yay. Can you, let me just zoom in on that. I have to try this again. I went through a stencil, and this is words and experiences fun, fun I can't concrete media I don't know but that's cool oh I didn't know that so yeah I was just experimenting and playing with inks and stuff so that's another option and what and but none of these stuck with me I didn't stick it didn't stick I just kind of had it and there it was and then I most recently, those of you who watch my channel a lot know that I just got this moleskine, S-M-O-L-E-S-K-I-N-E. -E. They call it moleskin. I don't know if you can see that. And it's a sketchbook. And I got this at a store called um, BAM around here. It's a bookstore, Books a Million. And it is basically, it's a, it's a sketchbook. It had on it sketchbook. It said sketchbook specifically. So that's the type of, um, and that's my address. But here, moleskin. Um, and I'm liking it. I'm liking the way it, hold, it is holding up to all my media that I'm putting in here. Um, I haven't had to glue any pages together. Uh, I've used quite a lot of different mediums. So uh, this is what I'm sticking with, and this is what's been working. This is what I'm going to, and I like this because it is about 8 by uh, 10. 8 by 10 when it's open. So you can do a double page spread. It's not too big, but yet it's big enough to get your point across. So that's what I'm sticking with. And now I'm going to go into a little bit of 
So once you decide what it is you want to art journal in, um, then you're going to need a few supplies to use in your art journal. Now, for the first uh, part when I was looking at all these videos about art journaling, I started buying all the stuff because I really didn't have a lot of the stuff. I was a painter. Um, I started buying um, some scrapbooking papers and things like that. Uh, a couple different mixed, like mixed media items, but my suggestion would be just use what you have. So if you have sharpies, like I have sharpies, I have. If you have these um, micron pens, or you know your jelly roll pens, <clears throat> these are all tools that can be used in your art journal, and that way you don't have to go buy fancy schmancy stuff and it'll still be cool. What I'm tending to do most now is I'm bringing my painting back into this. I wanted to try all the new techniques and the um, collage and um, the finnabar stuff and you know all the stuff that we see that's just gorgeous but ultimately what it comes down to is uh, for me is fun and playing so I'm going to show you what I play with, what my favorite things to play with are, and then let you determine for yourself what it is that you like to play with. So one of the first things um, I like to do is put some of this on the back of my page. The very first thing I do is just add a piece of this Tim Holtz tissue paper to the page. I just put this on so it's not a blank page. I glue this onto the pages. Um, with my, not, not gesso, this one, my matte medium. And this is just glue, basically. I mean, again, I was using Mod Podge, but um, I did find that Mod Podge was a bit sticky for this particular uh, venture. Because, I mean, you can do Mod Podge, you can do collage with Mod Podge if you're just going to put it on a tabletop or something. But in a book, when you close the pages, they tend to stick together. They're just very sticky. And the, the matte medium, it's a, a, it dries with a matte finish. And it's a little less sticky, I'm finding. I just like it. Um, and that I use a coupon. Make sure you use a coupon. And I get these at Michael's. Um, this is the Liquitex brand. I don't think it's their brand particularly. But um, actually, AC Moore and Michael's both sell Liquitex. Um, and I always use a coupon when I'm going to buy. Because these are at least $12 or something for a big bottle like this. So use it, try to find your 50% off coupons. But So that's the first thing I do. Just to put something on the page, get something going on there, and then I put a thin coat of gesso. And gesso comes in three, it comes in clear, white, and black. I only have the white right now, but I, I can see trying it in the future, um, different colors. I'd like to try the black for sure because um, I think I'd like to work with uh, my gel pens and my um, I now have paint pens and different things but anyway um, so the, on the back here it tells you if it's transparent or opaque so the finish says opaque the prep is transparent see I don't I don't know because it dries clear oh no no gesso it is opaque okay sorry this is my gesso it's a matte finish and it's halfway between thick and fluid I like this one because I can just squirt it right out of the bottle I used to have it in a tub but I like this one. And again, it's the Liquitex brand and it's the middle uh, fluidity, right? So that's the first thing I do. Coat this with a coated gesso, just sheer, kind of sheer coat. And now my paper has become non-porous. It's a non-porous surface. So all the media and paint and sprays and things that you want to put on here aren't going to just soak right into the page. They're going to have somewhere to sit. And so that's what I do. I'm going to go away and come back. Okay, from there, once I've gessoed everything, I, go, I add some color. And lately, I've been having a go-to palette pretty much of pink, <laughs> blue, and yellow. Like, these are my three go-to colors just because I love them. And literally I really I'm not gonna do this if I'm not happy like why am I gonna put colors down that don't make me happy so um, 
put what colors make you happy. This might not be your palette. Um, you know, I always have a little bit of orange, but yellow and blue make green. Um, yellow and pink make an orange. So these three will kind of make, and then these two will make a purple or a lavender. So they kind of mix really well. Um, the other type of paints I'm, I've been really into lately are the Martha Stewart Pearls. I just love them because they're shiny, you know, and metallics. I love metallics. Um, and they're also sprays. You know, you have your Perfect Pearl Mists, which are actually like a, a pearlized paint in a, in, a, in a spray bottle. And then there's the other ones called um, Glimmer Mists. Again, it's a glimmery thing. But, you know, don't. Go, you don't have to put these on your, I happen to have them because I used to, I was buying everything in sight at one point. But if you want an art journal, you just need something to give you some color. And I work with washes. I like my backgrounds to be kind of sheer. Um, I just ordered the Twinkling H2Os and was playing with them a little bit. And I'm going to be getting the uh, Silks Glazes as well. And those are... Um, they're acrylic paint, but they're uh, really shimmery and shiny. Cause just because that's what I like. Um, so I was going to say, too, after I apply that in a sheer um, fashion, the background, that like this one I didn't. I put this on opaque. But like this one, it was sheer. So you can see through. You can see words through there. You can see, let's see, what else can you see? Here's some more words. There's music notes in the background there. That's from that Tim Holtz paper. So ultimately, I'm really making this sheer. So it's just, I don't want to lose all that background. And then I take my stencils, and I just, I keep my stencils in this folder. And I've had this forever. I have all different stencils. I have some new, but I have them really old school from like, you know, really, really back in the day. Uh, I have some Halloween ones, just some squares. I have snowflakes. These are just those old school stencils. Um, and then, of course, I've got a couple Tim Holtz ones. I've got my uh, Diane Reevely, right? Isn't that who this is? The L Delusions by Ranger. I've got a couple of them. Here's a Christy Tomlinson. Um, you know, but the ones I really love and that are available are these, the um, Crafters Workshop. These are awesome little, little, they're around $5. And again, oh, here's that stencil that I could put the paste through. And um, Or it is just another way to ex of expressing our innermost thoughts onto concrete media. Oh, wow, that's cool. Anyway, I want to add color to my modeling paste now. I call it modeling paste, molding paste. But anyway. So stencils. I will go in and I actually use this, the cut and dry stamp pad foam. And this is by Ink Essentials, but I think Ranger makes this too, this product. It's basically here. These are the ones that I've used. It has this like black foam and then the front, it's kind of like that makeup sponge. And a lot of people use makeup sponges that you just get at the dollar store. Um, and this is what I go through. I cut these off of that. But then I go, I add paint through the stencil onto my page. So that's what you see here. Um, I I do the the background. I just put sheer paint down, or I might put something glisteny or something. But then I stencil over it with uh, opaque paint. So let me just see if I can get this. Okay. So what I mean is, like, you see these yellow circles. I just stenciled them on here with, with the sponge and yellow paint. I have, um, th these are stamped, the hearts are stamped with red ink. What else do I have? I have mostly just the circles on this one. Let me go to another page and see if I, uh, this, these are f a flower stencil that I used with pink paint. The orange is the circles, again I use that circles a lot. But I did pink flowers on a stunt through a stencil on that one. This one I did purple flowers, and it's kind of like a metallic paint. Can you see that that's metallic? The circles again, I always do the circles. I love them. Those are the only stencils on there. These were stencils too, and I was playing with modeling paste and stuff. Um, here, here's a swirly. That's a stencil. The swirlies are the stencil. 
Uh, the dots. I always do the dots. Yellow dots. I did some pink flowers. So I at least do about three different stencil designs in three different colors. Um, and I do that with paint. Then you do a little stamping. And those of you who started out as stampers, you know, have these in your in your stash, go ahead and use what you have. Again, it's not about going out and getting all this stuff. Just use what you have. I actually have this little bin and this is just my go-to art journal stencil. See, look, here they are. Here's the butterflies that I showed. There's my circles. Here's the flowers. Here's the swirlies. So those are my go-to stencils for uh, art journaling. Unless I'm working on something that's a specific theme or something, I'll change it up. But you can also stamp. So I just have pulled some different, um, mostly geometric patterns. That's what I feel like I want to stamp. I always go to, I have this heart stamp. I use this all the time and I use red ink. Now this is stays on ink and it's a permanent um, solvent ink and it doesn't smudge or anything. So, And then I also use archival, which is also a permanent waterproof ink. I have this uh, teal blue I was using in my last um, page too. But I'm going to get some more colored inks too, because why not? Um, but you don't have to. I always stamp my script stamp. These are just cheap stamps that I've had. They stay right in here. I put a little bit of stamping on the page and call it done. And then, then I'm pretty much done. Um, I, I just wanted to show you too. You can use, I used to have a piece of bubble wrap in here. I have these lids because I like making these circles with lids. I use the pen caps to make circles too. Um, and I usually do them in white. So sometimes you can put te texture without having a stamp. You can grab things from around your house like a flip flop or, you know, a, a Let's see if this flip flop has anything. But like, you know, it, maybe it has like ridges on it that you can get texture from or an old um, slipper or something, you know. Um, there's so many things in our homes that have texture that if you just put a little paint on it or ink, you can get that onto your art journal. So I am, I do tend to use uh, crafting things because that's just, I do have them in my stash. So, um, you know, and then you're going to need some letter stamps, possibly if you want to do um, any sentiments on your pages. I've used these by um, Lawn Fawn, again, because I had them. Um, I also have the Tim Holtz Chit Chat, which is, uh, these, these are already stickers and they're ready for you already. So you can just pick them out and put them in your art journal pages. This is more of a, a sentiment. Collect beautiful moments shine like the whole universe is yours. So these are, you know, actual sentiments. These are just words. Um, and then I did just get this Dymo label maker, which is, um, I want to call this, it's the 160. I know that, but, um, I like it. It's just simple. And if I, like, I put that on a couple of my latest pages, but again, you don't need it. You can write the words. Like, let's say this was from the Dymo label maker. It's the little things that make life wonderful. Um, I did that. But like, I just drew those letters and cut them out and put them on there. Just play. Um, same thing with art. I drew the letters and cut them out and glued them down on there. And then you just color and paint everything. The journal was from the Lawn Fawn stamps. Uh, Home Sweet Home was a different stamp set that I just stamped out the letters individually and cut the words out. So, I mean, this one's from my Dymo, too, my label maker. Um, so, what else? Okay, I changed my battery, too. So, okay, so where were we? We have the background, paint, stencils, and stamps. Um, I use book pages a lot. I really like the look of book pages. So, what I do is I'll either stamp an image onto a book page, and I just use this old book I have. It's not even that old. I love the book. Where the heck is it? It's called um, World Without something. Hold on. Can follow World Without End, but it, I just thought, well, that's a nice big fat book. I'll have a lot of paper. Um, I know a lot of people use uh, 
paper from the thrift stores. Like they'll find old books at the thrift store and use them because they're even more beat up. Or you can collage with the phone book pages. You can use the phone book pages or anything, catalogs, you know, um, for recycling. So make sure you just, you know, think about what you have and it, it all works. You don't have to go buy anything special. Um, but I just actually, so I stamp my images onto book pages or I draw them and then I cut them out and use them. I collage them in with my matte medium, which is basically a glue, that's gesso. <laughs> my matte medium, my liquid, it's a very fluid glue. Um, so get that all stuck down. And then I basically am pulling in what I love, which is painting. And I paint then the images with my paint brushes. So I have brushes that I've had forever, I mean, you can also use the lots of markers and pens. Like there's so many different ones. I've had these for a long time. This was when I first started my journey. Faber Castell has. I have gelatos, which I don't use as much because they're water based, and I feel like I'm gonna pick them up or smudge them. I have to learn more techniques with them. Um, these are India ink markers. These big brushes and. This is what I use to do um, shading around different things. Uh, but now I'm starting to paint my shading in because I just want to paint more. Um, I just got these Posca paint pens, the Uni Posca paint pens. And these are like this, um, the Sharpie paint, paint pens. There's a lot of different brands are doing paint pens. I just got these because these were highly recommended. Everybody loves them when you watch videos. And listen guys, I research stuff. If I'm not sure about something, I, I put it into the search engine of Google and I go to the websites and see what they're about. Then I put it into the YouTube search engine and see what people on YouTube have to say about the stuff, you know? Um, so don't take my word for it. You know, just because I, like, and like I said, ultimately use what you have that's what you should really do you don't need to go buy all this stuff um, I kind of got caught up in that in the beginning and I'm two years in now and I feel like I I wish someone would have told me this you know that you don't need all that stuff you can do it without it I mean there are a few probably uh, things that you like you're probably gonna need the gesso and a matte medium Use your coupons, get a big old bottle, you're good to go. Okay, so those, you're good. Any paint are fine, any paints. You don't need artist quality paint. Deco Art and Americana paints are great. Um, even the Apple Barrel and stuff, but Americana, I mean, any paints are fine. Um, what else? Uh, so brushes, let me just show you the brushes because I like a synthetic fiber brush um, the ones that you can get in Michael's in like packages, they're, th this one Craft Smart, I believe, you know, I use these for gessoing my pages and for putting, applying my matte medium to everything. And you can beat these up and you don't have to worry about them. Like they're getting kind of beat up, but that's what I use for that stuff. And then I keep my other brushes good. Like this, these are brand new over here. I just got them. Um, but I try to keep my other brushes pretty nice so that when I want to do techniques, painting techniques, I have halfway decent brushes. So maybe I'll, I'll do another video just specifically for brushes because I am going to be painting. I was painting today. Uh, I'm going to film the video, but I, I, I like to work out the kinks before I film. So I always paint another one. Uh, but, you know, like I said, use what you have. Let me see if I have hit on everything. Yeah, like these mediums, I had the soft gel matte medium, but it, it's, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this matte medium, Liquitex matte medium. It's just basically a glue. It's an acrylic glue. This adds body to your paint. So if I mix color with this, then I have something with a little bit of, of uh, a heavier body paint, or I can put this through stencils and stuff. Like you can do stuff with it, which, you don't need to do. You don't need to do that. That's all, that's all I'm saying. I mean, you might want to, and it's very cool when you do, and the molding paste too. I showed you that on that one page of, you know, I went through a stencil with it, and it's super cool. Um, oh, I gotta show you. Of course, I love, love, love 
my stickles. I am a stickles girl. I love glitter and I've used glitter too, regular straight glitter, but these are just so simple and easy to use on this type of stuff. You just squirt it on. It's like a glitter glue. I also have the, the scribbles ones in the metallics. I have the perfect pearls ones. What is this called? Liquid pearls by Ranger. Um, anything shiny and shimmery and stuff, I love to use those. I mean, you can literally outline things with this. You know, you can add little dots all over things and it, and it dries and it leaves a raised um, feel to it. So, um, just things that are in your stash, you can absolutely use. Uh, what else was I going to say? I think that's basically it. For art journaling, of course, you're going to need your um, paper towels and uh, wet wipes always come in handy. Um, let me take a look at a page and see. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk to you about. There are a couple of pens out there that I just wanted to mention these. I actually got my, uh, my go-to pen, which is totally starting to run out of ink. I want to show you this because I think it's running out of ink. I just got my replacement for this. Oh, see, it's still writing. But this is by Scarlet Lime. This is Christy Tomlinson's website. And I've had this in my stash for a while. Um, it's basically a rollerball pen, but it will write on mixed media. So a lot of times people, and you'll see them do a, an art journal page, they outline everything and just make it pop. You can put uh, a frame around it you can doodle like this actually is a stamp but then I fix it up and like make it all pop with my pen but I outline all that I outline all my fairies and my words with a pen with just a black pen a permanent pen so these aren't available anymore um, I think Christy bought them all up and um, that was that I, now I'm hearing about this food a Food, Feud, F-U-D-E, ball pen, and it's a 1.5. It's a bit thicker than the Christie's, uh, but it's it's got a great feel to it. It's slippery, and it's dark, and it's a little thicker, I would say, than that, but it definitely writes on mixed media. What, what I mean by that is it'll write on your page with matte medium and paint and all types of stuff on it. Actually, I outlined this one with my fine point black paint pen. This is the Uniposca paint pen. And I outlined this page with this. This is the fine point. I would recommend these. These are so, look at this. This is so, oh my gosh. They're so nice. They write, this is paint guys. This isn't a marker. So you can color, look at that. Oh, it just flows out of here so easily. Um, so if, if I'm enabling, it would be about these markers right now. Um, I can't wait, I'm gonna do a page. See, I'm trying to practice and see what I wanna do because I'm just gonna color a whole page. I might, it's gonna be a kind of a zentangly page, I'm not sure. Um, so I've been playing, trying to figure that out. So, um, but these are, a you should probably have some type of a um, a uniball pen. Also the white, which I am out of. The white uniball pen. I have the gold and the silver, so I'll show you those real quick. Um, but I need my white uniball pen too because I love um, to add white, hints of white. Where are you? I also have a clear Wink of Stella marker too. Here, this is it. Here's my gold uniball pen. So this comes in white. I'm going to order a bunch of these, but this is another great tool for art journaling just to write letters. I mean, they write so I don't know how long that was off for, but I'm just sharing about these different pens. So I need to get my white one of these. I have, I'm out of white. So I still just have my, um, this is my, oh, that's my Jelly Roll white pen, and that's pretty good, too. Like, let's see if I can make dots on this. And that's basically what it's for. So, if you like to doodle, maybe you'll want to doodle in your journal. Get yourself some good pens, maybe some paint pens, a couple of Jelly Roll pens. Um, if you like to paint, 
any paint will be fine. I like acrylic, obviously, acrylic paint. It's water-based, easy cleanup and stuff like that. These are my twinkling H2Os that I did this butterfly with, and look, it's like all shimmery and stuff. But you could always put either the Wink Estella, which this is just um, glitter. It's like a glitter marker. I'm just going to add glitter to the top of this black. Look at that. Look at it, awesome. So yeah, it was, it's clear. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, that's basically it. You can go crazy. There are so many things out there that um, you can play with. So ultimately what I want, I keep saying ultimately, uh, <laughs> but what I want to get across is just have fun um, do what you love to do. Don't worry about what everybody else does in their art journals. I mean, I get inspired. Absolutely, I get inspired by seeing other people's work in their art journals. But it's never going to be, my art journal is never going to be what they do. It's what I do. It's what I uh, love. It's what I love. It's what I like. Like, I love critters. I love flowers. I love color. So, I mean, that's what my art journal is going to be. Um, so I hope this was helpful, and I think I might come back with, um, another, um, video about paint supplies and stuff. So, alright you guys, thanks for watching.